I'm here today with Representative Graw. I'm going to share a little bit about her in a moment. But if you are a parent in Florida, you're going to want to listen to this information. And you're also going to want to share it with every parent that you can think of here in Florida that cares about parental rights and uh, what's going on here in Florida. Well, Representative uh, Erin Graw is joining us today. She has led the effort for the last three years here in Florida with a what she has deemed a parent's bill of rights. And the more I've looked at it over the last three years, the more I am so impressed at her uh, legal expertise and what she has done to create a solid foundation for parental rights here in Florida. And she just happens to be the representative for District 54, which is my district. So I'm really happy to have her join us today. Um, I wanna share a little bit about her bio. Um, she is a native of Vero Beach, Florida. Following law school, she returned to Vero Beach and worked with her father in his law practice. And in 2008, uh, she, uh, since 2008, she has served as a managing partner there at that law firm. Representative Grawl was elected to the Florida House of Representatives in 2016. She was subsequently reelected in 2018 and once again in 2020. And she's an avid legislative strategist and she has been at the forefront of leading legislation in Florida. And especially right now in the last three years, she's been leading this bill, the Parents' Bill of Rights, which we're gonna be talking about today. So, and we're so thankful to have you, uh, Representative Grawl, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Patty. And I appreciate all that you do for parents and families throughout our community and throughout Florida. Yeah, so, well, thank you very much. And I appreciate your effort here in the uh, Parents' Bill of Rights. I know you introduced it three years ago. And can you tell us like from the progression three years ago when you first introduced it, kind of what it's, what it's gone through up until this point where you're reintroducing it this year? Well, I think it's really been about educating the members of the house in particular where I serve of, um, you know, the, the role that parents should be playing in our communities and society and how we how we handle that as an institution as a government and that has been the biggest challenge is to make sure that we're showing people how um, the government does sometimes inappropriately intervene in that relationship and parents need recourse against the government to ensure that they have the ability the ability to really direct the upbringing of their child, which is a fundamental right. So, so that's where you've been working. And I believe in the first year, it actually passed through uh, several committees at that point until it died. And then last year, I mean, you had a lot of success on the House side with it as well, didn't you? We did last year. It made it through all of the House committees that it was referred to, and it passed the floor of the House. It also, I believe, progressed through two of the committees in the Senate, which is the most progress that we've seen in the Senate on this issue in the last few years. So this year, um, even though you made it through the entire three committees last year on the House side, and then it passed on the House side, it made it through two committees before it ultimately died. So where does that leave you for this year? Do you have, I guess you have to start over again, right? Each legislative session, we have to start over again if a bill was not passed and signed into law by the governor. So we will start um, in the House. We've been referred to three committees in the House. Um, hopefully we'll be starting um, to be heard in the next couple of weeks. And Great. from there, we will you know, hopefully move to the floor quickly this year. To it, The quicker we get to the floor of the House and if we pass the bill off the floor of the House, I think it leaves the Senate with more time to see the trajectory that the, the policy has taken over here. Okay, so you've you've actually introduced the bill then. And it's the bill been, has been yes, okay. the bill has been filed. Okay. And the number of that is HB 241, I believe. That's correct. Okay. And then on the on the Senate side, it's also been introduced by Senator Ray Rodriguez. And that Senate bill number is 582. And if anyone wanted to follow you know those bills, especially in particular yours, they could go to uh, myfloridahouse.gov and look up HB 241. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you feel like the Parents' Bill of Rights is so important 
um, the purpose of it, why, why do we need a parent's bill of rights and what would this accomplish? And you know, why, why is it so necessary that we actually have a law that affirms our parental rights? Well, much of parental rights has been defined by case law over the course of our country's history. And while that is important and it's um, a component of all of our country's laws, I think that when a legislature has the ability to codify those rulings by saying that this is such an important and fundamental right, we would like to put it in our statutes, we should do that. And so the bill really, you know, the purpose is to articulate to our agencies, the government agencies and institutions, the important role of family in establishing and impacting the policies that impact parents and families. And because too often we see agencies um, just kind of move on their own regard to you know, diminish the role of family. And we wanna make sure that family, the role of family is never diminished and that we are, um, we are putting into one place, this one chapter of law, and a place that all of these agencies and institutions can reference when they are considering any policy that may affect the family, as opposed to being scattered throughout, you know, six or seven volumes of statutes in Florida, it creates a better path, I think, for those agencies to consider the way in which they interact with the family. So, so in other words, there are a lot of different parental rights currently here in Florida, those statutes, but they're in so many different scattered places that, you know, if a parent has an issue or something like that, and they're trying to find that law, it's kind of very difficult, especially for people who are not um, educated in the law and those types of things. But this would actually put everything under one statute. And then also would government agencies guidelines as to what they have to, uh, you know, abide by. That's correct. And I, I think that more than the other statutes that address parental rights, this chapter of law sets forth a parent's rights, which shall not be infringed upon. Yeah. It enumerates certain rights, does not limit those rights. And those types of those types of explanations are not included in other areas of law. This chapter also speaks to private industry in some regard when it comes to health care, because there's some gray area around the consent of a parent for a minor's medical treatment. It's not explicit within the health care statutes necessarily. So this bill does create a chapter in a section which explicitly says that for a minor to obtain health care, the parent must consent. You know, it's not the government's job to raise the children, it's the parent's job to raise the children. And many times, most of the time, and I would say pretty much all of the time, parents uh, know what's in the best interest of their own children, especially since they know them best, right? Well, that's, that's the, the idea is that in general, children benefit from the advice and guidance of their parents. And this bill does not interfere with some other areas of law in which children sure do have the ability to receive some medical services without right. their parents' involvement, sure. but those are very specific and, um, and they have been created for a reason. There are certain circumstances under which children can access mental health services without a parent knowing. That concerns me as a parent, um, but there, there are defined guidelines for when that can happen. It, sure. should, not, it should not happen as a rule of law as, and it shouldn't happen as, um, we shouldn't default to, to that type of access to treatment without parents' involvement. We should default to the family being engaged in that decision together. Absolutely. And I mean, it used to be a given all through our society that um, parents are the ones who, you know, tend to their children and make those decisions for them, their children. And now we actually have to have a law that makes that statement. And that's unfortunate, but is the real, very real fact of um, where we're at right now in our society. And we have numerous states right now. We do have a national organization. It's called parentherights.org. It was uh, started by Michael Ferris. I don't know if many people have ever heard of him. You might wanna look him up. It was started by him a number of years ago when he recognized that there was an increasing infringement upon parental rights. So he saw what was coming down the pike in the future, and he created this organization 
And so um, now we're at a place where um, this bill is a very needed bill. A number of states have actually passed a very similar thing where they acknowledge and they recognize parental rights as being uh, fundamental. And um, it's Florida's turn. And we actually have a number of states that have been watching Florida over the last few years, very interested in what's going on here because we can actually set a precedent of putting families first for the rest of the nation and it can be a pillar and a guidepost for other uh, states to look at. And the reason it's really becoming more and more imperative is I have a stack. I have two folders right here um, that I've been uh, collecting articles um, and an Excel spreadsheet over the last few months, especially since the spring. Uh, there are multiple articles that have been uh, posted throughout the state of Florida of an increase in parental rights violations um, and also in parental, parental rights lawsuits where parents are actually suing government agencies because the government agency has infringed upon their parental rights. So why would you think that, um, that this is such a necessary thing? Why would you think, number one, that there's such an uptick in, in, in all these cases? And why is it so imperative that we, we pass this bill in this legislative session? Well, I think that uh, by nature of the size of government, so many times government is reacting to the, to the bad situations, to, to child neglect and abuse. And when that happens, there's um, a natural inclination to grow government's involvement in the family. And um, it's important to note that this bill does not interfere with the child welfare statutes. And when there is abuse, when there is abuse and neglect, there is a role for government to play. However, there's certain thresholds and standards that they must meet in order to interfere and become involved in the family relationship at that time. And so I think that we are certainly seeing um, just government overreach. And it's it's been it's been slight as over the years, but when you look at the cumulative nature of that, it means that the government has firmly inserted itself into the family and in, in between maybe the parent and the child and not and to the detriment of that relationship. You know, the government does not know better than a parent and, and never will know better than a parent in terms of what is best for a child. And parents have a vested interest in their, in their children's welfare and upbringing. And so I think that because there's pressures from around the world for us to um, give greater autonomy to children uh, in all of their decision-making, it's important to solidify the rights of the family in Florida so that we um, have made it clear to not only the government, but private institutions that family comes first and to interfere with that will have ramifications. So that's why I think the urgency is important because of that pressure that we're seeing worldwide. And so um, in, in working to pass this legislation this year, um, we have really seen throughout the uh, United States and in different places, parents are actually starting to engage in the late legislative process and, and in their city governments and their county governments. Um, what, what would, you suggest that um, citizens that uh, citizen parents do to get involved in helping support this legislative effort to get um, HB uh, for, uh, 241 and SB 582 passed in this legislative session? What could parents do as we the people get involved? I think parents should reach out to their state house member and their state senator and um, relay their their support for the bill, if they have specific stories about how maybe their life has been impacted, uh, you know, their family has been impacted by the government overreach that we have seen through, through stories, I think it's important that they, that they share those stories with their state representatives and also encouraging them to get the bills on the agenda and, you know, pass them through committee, I think is critical. Okay. But also doing so with, with kindness and gentleness, realizing that there is, there is a tremendous amount of um, policy to be considered this year, especially at this time of, the, of COVID and the coronavirus and how that's impacted so many different 
areas of our of our communities. And so, you know, making sure to stress the urgency, but also understanding that the jobs that we have to do in Florida as part-time legislators, it's significant what we need to accomplish in a 60-day session. Right. And, it, and it's important, like you said, with kindness and respect, because we're all in this together. There's a tremendous pressure on all of you to try to get all of this done and uh, to take all these things into consideration. So while well, I appreciate you sharing that, and um, there's, a, there's a resource that we've created that kind of uh, takes your bill, which is a lot of legal language, and it simplifies it. And um, I'm so um, grateful that, that you did that, but we also wanted to make it simple for people to understand what's really going on. And this is an ebook that we created. This is the pamphlet, actually. But um, what it does is it's a, a parent's guide to parental rights in Florida, and it takes everything that uh, Representative Grohl has uh, created in her legislative uh, bill here, and it breaks it down and simplifies it, and it tells you what your par parental rights are, it tells you why we need the Parents' Bill of Rights, and then it makes it very simple. And you can download this ebook right on our website, parentalrightsfl.org, and take it right. And, and we've also created a legislative packet that makes it easy for everyone throughout the state. They can download these two resources and they can um, make it their own and they can walk it right into their representative and their senator's office and encourage them to take a look at it. And um, so uh, we're just encouraging everyone, if you're interested, and if you want to find out more about your parental rights, you can go to our website, parentalrightsfl.org, and download this free ebook. And if you want these ebooks, you can contact me, and I will mail you them, because they're amazing. So um, Representative Grohl, is there, before we end, is there anything else you'd like to share um, with uh, parents here in Florida in regard to this issue? I just um, would like to say thank you to parents. Thank you to those parents who have supported this legislation, who are working to raise strong families in Florida, who are working to um, raise children who will be involved with their government and participate. And I think that it's the best example that we can give our children is through our actions. And you all who have been involved in this movement in particular are raising up strong children to be engaged um, in their pro in this government process and make right. the change that they want to see in the world. Well, thank you so much, uh, Representative Grohl. We appreciate you. We thank you for all your hard work. Um, we do consider you uh, a parental rights champion. There's no doubt about it. And um, we thank you for leading the effort for this good bill. And we are going to be watching uh, you and the uh, forward motion of this bill. We want to support it 100%. And uh, also Senator Ray Rodriguez, we want to thank, thank him for leading the effort on the Senate side. And um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, and to everyone out there, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Please get involved in this good effort. If you're a parent here in Florida, please um, go to our website, parentalrightsfl.org. You can follow our calls to action on our Facebook page, Parental Rights Florida. Um, we truly believe that the family is the heart of every community here in Florida. It's the heart of the state. It's the heart of this nation. And um, we just want to thank you all for joining us today. And please get involved and support this good bill. Thank you and have a great day.